Well, we're focusing now on Iceland. We're just days away from the country's big vote, which may decide its entire fiscal future. Yeah, paying back Britain and the Netherlands for the failure of the Ice Save Bank would cost each Icelandic taxpayer something in excess of $15,000. So why would anyone vote yes? Well, Bloomberg uh, columnist Matthew Lynn says there's no reason why they would or they should. Good morning, Matthew. Now, what you're suggesting at the moment is... Yeah, the Icelandic taxpayers just stick a couple of fingers up and uh, their government, in essence. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I mean, I think so. I think it's going, to be a it's going to be a fascinating vote because it's this funny kind of idea around the world that's really kind of taken root that, you know, whenever banks get into trouble, uh, whenever they lose large sums of money, governments have to step in and ultimately taxpayers have to step in and bail everyone out. But they, no one ever really asked, asked this. There was never an election about this. There was never votes on this. Uh, and what's happening in Iceland is really, you know, it's the first time that ordinary people have got a chance to be asked, do you want to bail out the banks? Do you feel you're responsible for it? it looks like the, Icelandics, uh, the Icelanders are going to say no, and I think they should say no. I mean, I think it's a, it's a bad principle. Got to but stop somewhere. But then it, it means, Matthew, that of course we can say the same here in the UK. I mean, we're effectively all shareholders of a lot of the UK banks. Yeah, but, but, but would that be such a bad? Would that be such a bad thing? I mean, you know, you know, if RBS, if RBS takes crazy risks and and loses lots of money, should tax should taxpayers always step in and bail it out? I mean, I think this is, I think this is the problem. Is these issues is, is in the midst of the credit crunch? We just we just kind of assume that that was the case. But in the aftermath, we're stopping standing back and saying, hey, we're not we're, we're not 100 percent sure that that's the case. And, and and this is the first time people have actually actually been asked if they really want to. And if we had a vote in the UK, do do we? Do, if you had a vote in the UK, do you, do you want to pay our RBS, uh, huge bonuses to all those bankers. Do you feel that you know people earning twenty thousand a year should should use their taxes to subsidise them? I'm not sure they'd say yes. You but know. do you not feel sorry just because Iceland, you know, are, are so small country and they have to pay so much per habitant? There's a big risk if yeah. we let these banks fail that it's going to be a Lehman Brothers fiasco again. Well, the, the trouble is, it already is a Lehman Brothers fiasco. I mean, things, things can't things can't get much worse. I mean, because sure, they're getting they're getting lots of pressure and they're getting lots of threats. You know, they, I mean, you know, their their application to the EU it probably isn't going to very well, going to go very well if they if they don't if they don't pay up. Uh, but hey, they don't want to join the EU anyway. They may have trouble with the IMF, but you know they've got they've got they've got big they've got big problems already. And sometimes you know, sometimes principles are actually worth more than practical considerations. There, there are practical arguments that say you should pay up, you should stay on friendly terms. But you know you have to remember, no one asked the Icelandic. I mean, the, the, the problem was caused by a, a small, tiny elite of wild bankers taking totally irresponsible risks. And you've got to dig deeper into it as well. Look at you know, what, what, were the, what were the savers doing? Why were yeah, the savers in? I mean, did you really mean on them? You're saying that they were greedy. You call them greedy in here. Say that they had an IQ of probably ten if they actually uh, didn't know that higher rewards involved higher risk. Yeah. We're talking about it basically, I mean, I was looking at it at the time, it's about 50 basis points probably more in terms of what you got in deposit at iSafe than you would at somewhere else. So that's not exactly greed, is it? it well, it's not, exact, it's not exactly greed. I mean, I'm over ragging it a bit there just to make the point. But you, you know, you've got to say that the idea that, you know, is that the, the, the savers could always be absolved from any kind of blame. I mean, because you say it was iSafe, you know, they had very aggressive marketing in the UK. They paid much higher rates uh, than, than, any, than any other about higher rates than Barclays or Lloyd's or any of the, you know, the building societies in the UK. And savers had to look at that. They had to be grown up, responsible people, and say, OK, it's a slightly higher rate. I get half percent more uh, on a deposit account. It, does that entail more risk? Well, you know, clearly, clear, clearly it did. And, uh, 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 and, you know, to totally disconnect risk and reward and say it doesn't matter, we'll always just bail you out, we'll always just give you the money, you can take the risk, if it goes wrong, don't worry about it, someone else will pay. Well, not, uh, a good, uh, not, a, not a good principle. Matthew, I'll have loads more questions for you in about an hour on this one as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, you'll come, you'll come back and give you a, a whacking next time. <laughs> we'll look forward to it. I'm preparing for <laughs> it. I'll get my hard hat on. <laughs> Matthew, thank you so much. Matthew Lynn there.